SiliconAngle.tv. I'm John Furrier. Juno's Pulse Mobile Security site launch, suite launch is going on behind me. You're about to take the stage here for Juniper Networks, defending your mobile life. So we're going to go live to the live feed. We're going to have interviews right after. CEO Kevin Johnson, among other top executives. The OEM deal just went through. Keep it quiet. Jim, get this info to senior counsel. Don't release the Q3 numbers. It'll kill us. Security code 9285. Robert Lewis is getting axed. Robert Lewis is getting axed. CMO of Juniper Networks, and I'd really like to welcome everybody for coming this morning uh, to the beautiful uh, Bentley Reserve Building. Uh, this building is really sort of apropos of today's topic. It's a fantastic backdrop because, as many of you probably know, this used to be the Federal Reserve of San Francisco, equipped with vault and the works. So we are in a sort of icon for security, which is really consistent with what we want to talk about today. A year ago, literally to the week, uh, Juniper mapped out both a vision and a set of principles uh, for the new network, and that is the mantra that we've been marching to, as many of you know, for the past year. And the principles around the new network are centered on automation, are centered on simplicity, and most importantly, vis-a-vis -vis today's topic, security. What's really fascinating, what's going on in the world, which we all live in, is that in 2012, mobile phones actually eclipse PCs, and 98% of the mobile phones that ship today ship without any form of security. So throughout the course of the day, you're going to be hearing about context for what's going on in the industry, the role that we play. Kevin will start off, Kevin Johnson, our CEO, giving you an overall perspective about how today's launch fits in the context of the overall Juniper strategy, and particularly what we're doing to enable both business professionals and consumers do their work in a secure way. Mark Bauhaus, who heads up our security business, is going to talk to you very specifically about what our strategy is and why we are so focused on mobile security, given the kind of pain points we see from our customers every day. And then Sanjay Berry, who's the father of this product with many members of the team, is going to take you through what I think is going to be a really exciting set of demonstrations so that you can see what Mobile Post does. So we won't just be giving you PowerPoints all day. We'll really make it come alive for you in the personas in terms of who it can help and then in a set of demonstrations. What I'm really hoping that you walk away from today is real simple. Um, this is a differentiated offering versus what's going on from the competition. We have the broadest set of support for mobile OSs in the industry. We have the deepest and richest set of offerings in terms of capabilities that business professionals and consumers will care about in the industry. And we offer a set of experience and economics that is unmatched in the industry. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Kevin Johnson, my boss and the CEO of Juniper Networks, to get us started. Thank you. Good morning. Woke up this morning, my uh, smartphone alarm clock went off bright and early, and as I got up out of bed to go work out, uh, I had the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times downloading to my iPad. Uh, certainly as I, as I read uh, the news of the morning uh, over breakfast and then driving through the city this morning, I VPNed into Juniper to check the latest uh, statistics on sales and shipments, which are certainly important to us. And I was just kind of reflecting that this really is a mobile world. And today, I, I just want to take 15 minutes and frame what we're doing in three things. Number one, I just want to share a perspective on this industry trend around the mobile internet. Number two, a perspective on our approach to securing the mobile internet. And number three, I'm just going to frame the high-level uh, set of announcements and, uh, and introduce some of the guests that are here today uh, to help uh, share their perspective on this. So thanks for joining us, and uh, you know, let's, let's kind of jump right in. You know, if you look at, at the key trend around the mobile internet and as it's unfolding today, there are a couple things that are key. Certainly there's this explosion of mobile internet connected devices. 
smartphones, tablets, uh, and, and you look at the evolution. The evolution of technology went from PCs over a wired connection to the internet, to PCs over uh, in laptops over Wi-Fi, to now it's going to new form factors, smartphones and tablets. And according to Gartner, smart, smartphone sales were up over 50% in the second quarter. In fact, Morgan Stanley recently re, uh, projected that smartphone sales will exceed PC sales worldwide by the year 2012. Uh, certainly, if you look at what's happening with this trend, certainly there are more and more digital devices. In fact, the number of mobile internet devices may grow to over 10 billion in the next 10 years. And so this trend is underway. In fact, the trend of this mobile internet is really not only these new devices, but the services that are provided to those devices, whether it's services related to, to connected socialization or content consumption. You know, in fact, if you look at some of these devices uh, today in New York City, you can uh, take your smartphone device and wave it over a, a reader to get on the New York subway. Uh, the Starbucks uh, gold card is available on your smartphone device. So you can go in and order that double tall, non-fat caramel macchiato. <laughs> Absolutely uh, no whip, no fuss, no mess with the smartphone. So this wide range of services. Now it's time that we look and, and say, you know, with this explosion of internet connected devices and smartphones uh, and, and tablets, it does open up significant implications from a security standpoint. And you know, a couple of key statistics. You know, first of all, uh, you look at uh, mobile devices that uh, are purchased by consumers. Uh, the recent study that was done showed that uh, roughly 80% of those devices are coming into corporations and they're accessing corporate internet. They're accessing the corporate network and data on that corporate network, you know, oftentimes without permission of, uh, of the IT organization. In fact, close to 60% of them are doing it on a daily basis. Now, certainly this presents a set of, uh, uh, of issues or concerns. In fact, uh, over 40% of these smartphones are used for both personal information as a consumer as well as business information. You know, I personally carry one smartphone device that I use for my personal use as well as for my business use. And this is, this is happening in a way that provides a set of things across the network that's no longer self-contained. These devices connect over a 3G spectrum uh, through a service provider, and they can connect to consumer over-the-top services. They connect through a 3G, 4G to uh, business services from the enterprise. They then can, can roam and connect over Wi-Fi uh, types of links. The fact is these devices are connected. And it's creating significant challenges and concerns for large enterprise customers. In fact, uh, one large enterprise just last Wednesday, Alaskan Airlines, they uh, asked their employees to connect to their network, uh, basically, and they restricted it to two mobile devices. On the approved list, they had iPhones and Windows Mobile. Not on the list were the range of devices, including Symbian operating systems, Android, and Blackberries. Their logic, their reason, well, security is the challenge that they had, and they wanted to make sure that they're being prudent and thoughtful about protecting corporate data, and therefore, providing a security solution across a wide range of devices uh, is the challenge they're trying to solve. With what we're bringing to market today, we believe we've got a great solution for that. Certainly for service providers, it also creates a number of challenges. The fact that there's multiple points of vulnerability. Vulnerability certainly within the network and the network traffic, vulnerability on the device, vulnerability uh, in the backend applications and data. And you know, today, our view is, is that uh, the types of solutions that need to be provided in the marketplace need to be end-to-end. -end. And then finally, for consumers, you think about how much personal information is on your smartphone, on your device, whether it's your social security number, perhaps passwords to different websites that you visit, your online banking information, your personal email, personal photos, and the amount of theft and loss uh, that can occur either through malware and bad actors uh, stealing that data or just simply losing the device. Now we're going to hear a bit more today from both enterprise customer perspective as well as service provider perspective and we're going to take you through some scenarios on the consumer's per perspective. But at some level this becomes very personal. This is, this, is, this is individual's data and the fact is that if that data is on that phone and if that phone uh, gets out there that data is everywhere. And the opportunities for bad actors to exploit that and for people to take that information and uh, uh, use it for unintended uh, uh, outcomes uh, is significant. 
So clearly, we look at this and we say, history can teach us a couple of things. Now, first of all, if you look at uh, the two key points that history can teach us is number one, is that the uh, bad actors that have developed malware, they are gonna do nothing but get more sophisticated. In fact, if you look at the evolution of, uh, you know, of viruses and malware, and you start back to Los Alamos, New Mexico, and uh, some academic uh, research that was done in 1966 by John von Neumann, he was a professor uh, working at Los Alamos, he authored a paper that talked about uh, the, the basis for self-replicating software. And it was a theory that said, hey, self-replicating software can certainly be used for good purposes, but it can also be used for bad purposes. You roll forward, 1981, you saw the, fir the first boot sector infections. In the year 2001, you saw significant network worms. And those of you may remember the terms Code Red and NIMDA. In fact, I remember them well. I happened to be working at Microsoft at the time and going to call on a customer that had handwritten a sign on their front door telling employees not to turn on their PCs or laptops, that uh, NIMDA and Code Red had fundamentally shut down the entire network. So these things really are real, and history will tell us that what we saw in the era of PCs will move to smartphones and tablets. In fact, in 2009, we saw Trojan uh, begin to target the Symbian and more recently the Android platforms. So lesson number one, is that the trajectory of malware is to become more sophisticated. It will evolve over time, and there are bad actors that will find ways to exploit this data and information in the mobile internet era. Lesson number two is that, you know, for those of us who've worked in the industry for, for many, many years, can attest to is that waiting and reacting to this after the fact is a very costly proposition. It's costly for the users, it's costly for the businesses, it's costly for the technology industry. And so clearly, establishing a leadership role and trying to get out in front of this before this wave of, uh, of malware and antivirus and uh, security issues hits, we think is the most uh, effective thing to do, not only from an industry standpoint, but from uh, a focus on our customers and creating a great set of economics and experiences on this network. So waiting is the wrong answer, and a piecemeal solution uh, will only deal with part of the issue. We're really focused on how we take an end-to-end -end approach. So we believe it's really fundamentally time to set the mo mobility security agenda. And we're setting that agenda with a set of five uh, principles that we outline. Certainly we believe it protection at all points. On the device, in the network as traffic flows through the network, and certainly in the data center for the applications and data that's being accessed. The second point is support across all mobile operating systems and devices. Having a, a, a security offering that only addresses a subset of those end devices puts all the challenge on the customer to solve these problems. So support across this wide range of mobile operating systems and devices as the market continues to, to mature and develop, we think is a core principle. The third principle is one of extensibility. And this is a common principle in our entire Juno strategy. The fact that the solutions we provide we really work to have that software have a set of open APIs and allow third parties and customers to innovate on top of that. Juno's Pulse is no different. Fourth is being user friendly. You know, clearly, uh, you know, impacting, you know, you want this to be non-intrusive to the end user and you want it to be very easy and simple to configure, set up, and deploy. And the flip side of that is easy to administer. In many of these enterprise customers, the chief security officer or their organizations are having to set policy, administer policy. You not only want it to be a great user experience for the end user, but also a great experience for the administrators who set policy and, and establish those policies. Now, now why, you might ask, you know, why is Juniper moving in this direction? Well, clearly we're building on a foundation of technology that's been in the market and has evolved over the last uh, seven to eight years. In fact, we've been in the security business since the year 2003. And uh, we've been a market share leader on our high-end firewalls and, and protecting the data and the, and, uh, the traffic within the network. Uh, in fact, today, with our uh, uh, partnerships and our reach with service providers, we're securing the vast majority of mobile internet traffic that flows on the network today. And certainly with this announcement, we're now extending that to the end devices and how those end devices are now secured as well as the traffic within, within the network. 
Now certainly, you know, we look at the majority of smartphone traffic as being secured by our mobile secure solution with what we're announcing today. We believe we now uh, span over 75% of the devices that uh, the mobile internet has uh, people connecting to. And we're fortunate enough to also have great success with the enterprise. What we're announcing today builds on our uh, technology that provides enterprise customer secure sign-in. And the fact that we have over 25 million uh, users or 25 million installations of this technology for secure access to corporate uh, networks, we're extending it now with this mobile security solution. And in fact, uh, 24 of the Fortune 25 companies on the planet use Juniper Networks for this SSL VPN secure sign-on. And your case, in case you're wondering why 24 out of 25, certainly our largest competitor has not decided to standardize on Juniper Networks, but we'd be happy to license the solution to them as well. Now, we've, we've given a great deal of thought about how we put this solution together and how we, uh, how we deliver this, not only for today, but for the future. And I think the strategy that we have and what we're trying to do is now extend our leadership position by securing traffic in the network to providing a very seamless end-to-end -end solution that really focuses on all of not only the current threat vectors, but the anticipated threat ve vectors. The threat vectors that might span the device, the network, the applications, and the data. We're doing that in a way that we're building security in. We're building security in to our, uh, our mobile internet offerings for service providers. We're building security into the data center architecture that we're providing to enterprise customers and service providers. And we're building now security into those end devices. We're doing in that in a way where we think technology and software and automation can provide a very uh, simple, easy to use type of solution for something that can be typically very complicated. We're doing in this in a way that leverages the platform-based operating system approach that we've introduced with, Ju with Junos. Whether that's uh, the programmability of Junos in the network, and we have many uh, of our customers who are, are, and partners who are building things on the software developer kit, to extend the security capabilities in the network. And we're applying that same process with Juno's Pulse on the end device. The fact that we provide a footprint and a platform with a great security suite for these end devices, and we make that programmable, and we embrace innovation from third parties to extend that and to create a broad range of solutions, which means this ecosystem is a very important uh, aspect of what we're trying to do. And certainly, this concept is one that I think is familiar to, uh, certainly to everyone at Juniper, and I think as we, as Lauren pointed out, it was a year ago that we put a stake in the ground around this concept of the new network. And that concept that we talked about a year ago applies to the mobile internet. The fact that we're investing in R&D to really focus on the set of things that create the foundation for high-performance networking, we're doing that in an open and extensible way that attracts an ecosystem of innovators, so that the, the sum of the innovation and the R&D investment that Juniper makes, plus the innovation and the R&D investment of our partners and that ecosystem really unleashes this wave of transformative technology addressing the new network. We're applying that today with what we're announcing with Juno's Pulse. And in fact, uh, we're gonna have a, an opportunity uh, to take you through some specifics of what we're announcing with Juno's Pulse and the uh, mobile security suite. Uh, we're going to start uh, with the first set of announcements that take you through the features and the capabilities of this mobile security suite for the enterprise user as well as for the consumer. We're also uh, going to take you through a little bit of the work that we've done to, uh, to create and invest in and establish this global threat center that provides 24 by 7 around the clock global monitoring of all uh, mobile security threats uh, to consumers and to enterprise customers. And then third, we're going to talk about uh, some partnerships and the work that we're doing uh, with our partners to help secure enterprise customers as well as consumers and really enable this type so of solution to have impact. Now, it's, um, it's a real pleasure. Uh, we've got some guests here today. Uh, David Merrill, who is a strategist in uh, the Chief Information Security Office at IBM. He's going to share a perspective of what IBM is doing to fundamentally secure the mobile internet and the range of smartphones and mobile devices that are connecting to IBM's network and how that translates to a set of solutions that they are uh, focused on. We're also pleased to have uh, Mark Patterson join us today from BT, general manager of the mobile data services, and he's going to talk a little bit about the set of offerings that they've created to take to market to help their customers 
have a more secure mobile internet experience. And uh, John Donovan, the chief technology officer at AT&T, uh, is joining us via video to share a perspective on uh, you know, how AT&T thinks about uh, the security uh, opportunity and some of the implications uh, from a security standpoint in the network. And so uh, let's just kick it off uh, by starting with sort of the perspective on what, uh, what John has to say. So let's go ahead and, uh, and roll that video if we could, please. Thank you. We as a company focus a lot of our energy in trying to discover the landscape of threat, find it early, find it in the network, and never allow it to manifest itself to an end user or an end device. A lot view us by the, um, the size of the corporation and employees and revenue. The total investment dollars that we make and over the last several of years we've been among the top, if not the top, um, investor in the United States in infrastructure. So security and privacy and some of the things that, that uh, as a company have become foundations of our reputation uh, become more challenging each and every day. When it comes to securing the network, um, there is an amount of collaboration that's really required in the ecosystem. And in the area of you know, the mobile network connection of security, it'll be no different. And I think you'll see companies differentiate. We certainly have always differentiated ourselves and plan to continue to differentiate ourselves by the breadth of security offerings that we provide. People are using their smartphones and mobile broadband, with that comes, you know, an enhanced threat. The best uh, way to manage threats is before they find their way to the handsets. And so we very much think a network-based solution is where we hope to catch everything. We're practical enough to realize that doesn't occur. We need a handset solution that works in conjunction with the network solution. We're interested in security as a service and security as a foundation. So we can expect that at both the handset and the network, we're going to do everything we can for prevention and we're going to make enhanced services available for enterprises and consumers as service offerings that we would present out for folks who are willing to say for that extra amount of security, I'm willing to pay for that peace of mind and I'm willing to pay for that peace of mind for my family. And we think about it in the context of all of the other assets that we have, whether it's parental controls about when a young child can get text messages to which things they watch on television. So our entire infrastructure operates with that philosophy. I'm John Donovan, Chief Technology Officer at AT&T. Good morning. As you heard from uh, Kevin and John, uh, we really are all living the mobile dream. Uh, the killer application is indeed having the internet and all the power of the internet in the palm of our hands. And in some cases, the crook of our elbow with tablets coming as well. Being able to socially network, to find information, to be entertained anywhere, anytime on a diversity of networks is amazingly powerful. So what, what is the next killer application and what's really missing? <clears throat> That's what we want to talk about today. And specifically, the next killer application, we think, is peace of mind. Now, as we get more and more dependent on the internet uh, in a mobile fashion with all these devices, uh, as we start to bring them to work, as we want to be productive with very sensitive data, as we start to store passwords, uh, credit card information, personal information, start to download data from our workplaces, and for that matter, as consumers at home, there's more and more vulnerability that we have. And what we're missing is the peace of mind to know that that device and our connection and our relationship with that internet in the palm of our hand is actually safe. Now, is that a really valid concern right now? Does it really uh, impact everybody? Well, yes, it does. Again, more and more of us are bringing our phones to work. And nine out of 10 of us, go back one, nine out of 10 of us uh, are very concerned about security uh, of those devices and our access to, to sensitive data and intellectual property and our own uh, data as well. And three out of 10 people in 2009 actually were compromised in some way in their mobile experience, either email or SMS spamming or malware or spyware, uh, at least that they know about, three out of 10. That's a pretty significant number. This is not a theoretical threat. 
and it does travel the same sort of growth pattern that we saw in the PC space as they started to get connected to the internet in the late 90s and early 2000s. Now, for service providers, this pre presents a, an enormous opportunity. There are a billion mobile workers in the world today, people that want to be able to connect to sensitive data wherever they are, um, and a third of the workforce globally by the year 2013 will be mobile as well. This is an opportunity for service providers to monetize a value-added extra service that provides that safety, that defense of all of our mobile lives, and to do that on a broad basis at amazing scale. For consumers, as I mentioned, uh, most of us, eight out of 10 of us, store some kind of really sensitive data on these phones. Uh, and there are many ways to access that data electronically and, and through spyware, malware, viruses, and other vectors that I'll talk about. But just the, the prospect of losing the phone or having it stolen is terrifying. These become not only the internet in the palm of our hand, but the life in the palm of our hand. Or if we're workers, the office in, our, in the palm of our hand that happens to also be our personal life going back and forth. As Kevin said, 40% of us, at least, depending on the country, even, even more in many cases, are using phones for both personal and business use. So for consumers, uh, in the United States alone, over 2 million phones uh, stolen or missing last year. That's a big number. If you're one of those 2 million, uh, you've had that experience of losing your identity, losing your data. And it's a big worry. So we're pleased today to be introducing uh, three announcements, the first of which is, for the first time, the Junos Pulse Mobile Security Suite. Now, you'll see offerings from some of our competitors that may have point offerings in this space around one platform or a particular aspect of security, but this is the first time you have this level of depth of security across all the threat vectors that we're seeing in the mobile space. When we talk about antivirus, we're talking about preventing and identifying spyware, uh, viruses themselves, um, looking at uh, other threats where code insertion may be a problem, basically monitoring the health of the phone based on all the intelligence that we have about threats that are coming into the mobile space. A personal firewall um, so that you're able to filter out uh, bad content. Um, and very importantly, device monitoring and control, not just for one platform, not just for one phone, but for the diversity of phones that you may own. Again, more and more of us are multi-device power consumers or power workers. That means that we may have different operating systems, we may have different form factors in our smartphones, in our tablets, in our PCs, notebooks, and netbooks. So the ability to be able to monitor those smartphones and mobile devices, to be able to control the content and watch what's happening, to be able to secure sensitive data and shut down access from potential applications that we download uh, that shouldn't, shouldn't be doing uh, accessing certain data is very important. Being able to, to shut down spam, to be able to stop the SMS and the email uh, threats that come through spamming, very important. And I think the vast majority of us have started to receive these uh, nasty messages that we'd rather do without. Uh, and that often are trying to link us to malware uh, attacks as well. And last but not least, for those two million people and the people around them uh, who are afraid of um, uh, losing or having their phone stolen with all the data on board, uh, theft and loss protection. So the ability to find your phone, to be able to identify and locate it on a map, uh, to be able to wipe it and shut it down and shut down its access if you indeed have lost it for good. Very, very important functionalities, and this is what defending your mobile life is about. So we're very excited to be announcing the deepest set of functionality uh, for the uh, mobile security world with this announcement today. Now, what does this mean? Well, for enterprises, it's a whole suite of functionality that allows us to enable people to bring whatever phone they have into work and be productive and be safe and to secure our intellectual property as a company. So the ability to find a phone, to be able to wipe data, to be able to stop access rights when the phone is lost or stolen immediately and do so remotely, very, very important. We're also combining access and security for the first time, no other vendor offers authentication with encryption to tunnel safely into the intranet environment, offer access to enterprise applications remotely on the go in a completely safe fashion, as if you were sitting at your desk, but remotely. Doesn't matter whether you're on a 3G network, a Wi-Fi network, uh, you have that accessibility and you know that your endpoint is safe and secure with the mobile security suite. That combination is the new secure network client uh, for mobility and that's, that's what we're announcing. 
we're also able to enforce policies consistently across the entire network. So you hear from one of our major customers today uh, and how they think about that. But the ability to, across devices, be able to offer consistent policy on a global basis so that everybody has the same kind of safety uh, security for the devices is very important. And then at the end of the day, to keep it really simple, to have a nice integrated client that's very easy to access on a phone, doesn't require a lot of technical configuration, very, very simple to set up, and the back end uh, ability to go monitor and manage these policies consistently, simply, and at low cost. Very, very important. And again, to do it across the full range of security functionality that we're talking about, not one phone or one silo at a time, uh, the way some of our competition, all of our competition approaches the problem. Now, for service providers, as I mentioned, this is an unparalleled opportunity to monetize a service that is of value to all of us, to be able to have innovative security services that transcend the, the range of smartphone uh, and, and mobile devices that we have, to be able to scale across all customers with a single solution, much lower cost for a service provider to implement, much more broad in reach in terms of potential market. And then to offer both managed services and the opportunity to offer self-managed services, to be able to go find a phone, to be able to manage uh, that relationship, and as I'll talk about in a minute for consumers, the ability to help defend and protect our children as well and their access of network services. And then at the end of the day, to be able to tailor these services specifically for the service providers offering in their target market. You'll hear from BT shortly uh, in a very innovative offering where they've done exactly this uh, for their, their uh, target market in an innovative fashion. So for service providers, this is truly value add. This is not about cost. This is about monetization and adding value added services that are new in the market, comprehensive, and provide more reach very quickly. For consumers, a whole different set of uh, opportunities here. Again, we have sensitive data in our own right. It's not just about what we do at work and the information that we might download uh, from a work environment. It's the ability to protect our multi-use device from viruses and other types of malware, from spam, from spyware, to be able to defend our kids uh, from cyberbullying, from online pred predators, to help them not be inundated with the bad uh, aspects, uh, the bad actors uh, on the internet. Uh, you know, most of us uh, buy our kids uh, phones so that they can be safe, so that they can reach us and we can reach them, so that we can pick them up at the right time, that we have communication. Uh, we think that that's uh, really about their safety. And yet, at the same time, there's significant uh, data now uh, that shows uh, malicious use of sexting, of inappropriate uh, content coming in, being shared socially. Uh, and now we have the ability to protect and defend our children through offerings that service providers can, can uh, provide uh, to defend those uh, kids on those devices and make sure that the, the mobile life uh, for our kids is what we intended it. Um, and that includes the ability to be able to back up and restore devices remotely, again, across platforms, reflecting the, the real diverse and heterogeneous mobile life that we all live. Um, and finally, to be able to find and wipe content and contacts on demand if we have indeed uh, lost the phones uh, somewhere in our family. So for consumers, these issues are just as acute the mobile life is just as in need uh, of defending uh, as it is in the prosumer or the enterprise context. Now, equally important in terms of the depth of offering and this integration of security and secure access is our reach across platforms. Again, the real world here is that whether you're a service provider or you're an enterprise or you're a family, you have multiple platforms, different operating systems, different devices, they're heterogeneous, and you want that same kind of protection, ability to manage devices, ability to defend your mobile life, whatever device you ha might have. So whether you're on an Android platform, whether you happen to use a BlackBerry, a Symbian uh, device, a Windows mobile device, or an Apple iOS device, you want protection. And this is the first time in the industry that a mobile security suite like this has offered that breadth of coverage across devices. This, again, we think reflects the reality of this killer application of the internet in the palm of your hand, where you want peace of mind uh, around all the devices in your world. The second announcement today after the mobile security suite uh, is our new Juniper Global Threat Center. Now, this is built on a history seven years of experience through our S-Mobile acquisition of monitoring uh, the uh, network and mobile devices and our customers looking at emerging threats, looking at vulnerabilities, looking at the bad actors and what they're doing, and being able to publish and provide research on that information 
uh, and also incorporate that research into threat management uh, and basically supplying the information these phones and the mobile security suite needs to protect our mobile life. So uh, we, this is a threat center that's located in Columbus, Ohio, uh, but networked globally, an integral part of our value proposition and the value that we want to offer to the new secure mobile world. The third announcement today has to do with new research that we've just conducted. So this is just being published today, brand new, no one's seen it other than you. Uh, we went out uh, and talked to 4,500 mobile consumers globally in 13 countries and got a current, as in this month, October, pulse of what's happening with their secure, uh, security concerns and their mobile life. So what we found is that globally, and it varies a little bit by country, but 40% of smartphone users use their phones both for personal and for business use. 81% access their workplace, their work network, without permission of the IT organization. Now that one's really interesting, and I note that the number is a little bit less, but not much less in the United States, where we have uh, typically fairly secure networks. Uh, in companies and slightly higher in, in other countries uh, where often networks aren't quite as secure technically as in the United States, but 81%, eight out of 10 people uh, are accessing their employer's network to do things that have to do with uh, secure intellectual property, uh, with the intranet environment, often with email, but often with other backdoors to access network properties and applications. 59% do it every day. That is an enormous number. And we're not yet, as an industry, obviously protecting those endpoint environments or providing a secure connection so that we can authenticate and, on a policy basis, encrypt and access information in a, in a, in a safe way. So 52% of respondents uh, with children rank parental controls as extremely or very important. Uh, I suspect that number will go up as more and more kids uh, have phones over time. And over 50% are very concerned about theft or loss. 72% access sensitive data. So seven out of 10 of us, uh, think about this room, seven out of 10 of us are accessing and, and storing banking credit, uh, password information, social security numbers, uh, medical record information in our phones, and often without any kind of password security or other uh, security on the device. And last but not least, in the bottom right, and this scares me as a, as a parent, one out of five teens admit to sending inappropriate content. Um, and that is not exactly what we all had in mind uh, when we bought phones for safety and security. And now we do have a set of solutions that can protect uh, our kids' lives as well as our own in this new mobile world. So very, very interesting research, and uh, you've, there's more detail and more numbers behind that that you can uh, analyze at your leisure, but uh, very interesting, the moving target, the changing world that we're in right now. Um, and it's really bringing together uh, this set of mobile security technologies that we're about, that we're investing in, not just in the cloud, not just in the network, but now at the endpoint device, uh, that for the first time we're able to provide security and remote access in a combined smart mobile network client with the broadest support across devices of any vendor in the industry, um, and with a single solution that enables you, from an enterprise perspective particularly, uh, to have security and policy for the mobile device, but also for PCs, notebooks, and netbooks with our 25 million user installed base uh, using the same the access technology part of the solution. Um, so we really have invested significantly. Again, we're a market leader from a mobile security perspective in the cloud and data center environment. We're a market leader in terms of access to enterprise networks. We're now putting out the leading software in the mobile security suite for defending your mobile life. So for customers, what should they do next? Well, enterprises can contact uh, Juniper and our value-added resellers right now. All of the software is available now. Uh, service providers can accelerate their certification of these kinds of technologies, because I know everybody in this room wants this kind of security, uh, wants this kind of safety, uh, and there is a market immediately available right now for this kind of technology. And consumers can also go to our website, there's lots of information about these offerings, and find out more about how they can register their interest for this kind of technology, and also get more information about how to secure themselves and their families using their, their uh, mobile uh, phones and devices today. So with that, I would like to uh, introduce uh, our next speaker, Dave Merrill, uh, is the chief endpoint security strategist for the largest technology company in the world, IBM. Dave, welcome. Thanks so much, Mark. 
Good morning and, and, and welcome. I'm very excited to be here, share this with my, uh, my trusted partner in Juniper, and, and tell a little bit of our story on this challenging journey ahead of us. So as you'd expect, let me put this into context. From my view, this is kind of really about a second revolution, right, in mobility. So we started at the enterprise very much desktop, right? And I think if you, if you remember back far enough, very on-premise, desktop. So that kind of led us to the first, the first mobile revolution, right? It was really about giving our employees laptops so they could start to compute anywhere, anytime, but, but really put it in, the, in quotes. Because let's face it, it's not really practical to be able to use a laptop anywhere, any place. But it certainly got them off-premise and, and started this revolution. So as we look at the next revolution, and, and I really see this as the next the next part of our journey, right, as we look at the workplace of the future. And certainly, the smartphone becomes not the only solution. That very much the first revolution, the laptop, was almost a one-size-fits-all, right? Everyone kind of got within a given choice, maybe a couple models, but it was standard image, controls all the same. It was not role-based at all. As we look at the workplace of the future, um, it really is about what, what's the role of the employee, and then what's the right solution for them? And, and so in a lot of cases, I think you'll see that this takes various forms. Some folks, it may be still the traditional laptop, maybe supplemented with a secondary smartphone. But for some folks, we really envision that this will become, smartphone really does become a primary device for a lot of our mobile workers, right? The folks that are in front of our customers, adding value to our clients, um, and because it really gives them the kind of efficiency that, that they need there, right? So that we can better serve our clients. Um, certainly at the same time, the security side of me says this is a challenging transformation um, because we can't lose sight of, of kind of the primary concern we have, which is really all about our data. Um, as I look at this space, for us it really is about the data. Um, we have very clear requirements for how we protect data. Well established, you know, kind of says for this classification of data, here's the controls we require. Um, that's, that's really very finite um, in, in most cases. And so what it says is, all right, as I look at how I need to protect the data and I look at the kinds of roles I talked about, right, in this transformation, it really says, what's the likely kind of data I'll have on a given smartphone? Because the challenge then becomes, What's the right technology to ensure that that data is every bit as secure as it was on the laptop and on the desktop and in our data centers? So it really comes down to, you know, how do we make sure that we've lost nothing in terms of security while we enable this transformation? Um, the one thing that really resonates for me here is the fact that because we put the data on a smartphone, it really isn't any less valuable. And so that's kind of become this guiding principle of, you know, how do I enable this? How do I let our employees take that, that, those huge efficiencies that are available? At the same time, can't sacrifice, you know, the security of our data, of our clients' data, of, in some cases, regulated data. So they become very important. Let me talk a little bit about smartphone malware. And, and of course, this is the journey that we've been on for a couple of years. When I started this journey, um, I was actually told that I was fixing a problem that didn't exist, um, as you'd expect, right? As I went forward and said, you know, geez, I need the money for this, this new project. Um, because certainly there are, there are problems out there that we could have spent that money on that were real then. Um, but clearly, from my view, and, and I think one of the great things is it's a view that as I partnered with Juniper and the Juno's Pulse team, you know, I, I was able to find that, that partner that really kind of understood where my head was at. Um, because it doesn't, to me, it's very obvious that while the threat landscape right now is kind of very focused on, you know, Windows, um, as smartphones become the primary computing device, guess where it's going to go, guys? It, it will be there, whether that's in 18 months, 24 months. And, and the really great thing is, as I started working with the, the Juniper team, um, in our initial pilots and looking at the product, th they told me, oh, rest assured, it's there, right? It's already there. You just don't see it. And, and you know, certainly, sure enough, as we piloted that first, that first uh, deployment, 
we found malware on smartphones. So, so again, I would, I would share with you the, the one important point that uh, it, this really isn't an urban legend. It's real today. I think it becomes a bigger problem as we look forward. And certainly, it's important that we're all prepared um, when it does become you know, prevalent. And that's really uh, what I have to share with you today. I, I appreciate the opportunity. And certainly, thanks again to the, the Juno's Pulse team. Um, they've, they've, again, been a wonderful partner for us. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, great, first of all, to take your time here and to come here and share your insights. And thanks for obviously deploying Junos Pulse worldwide to protect your workforce. So we've heard about Junos Pulse. We've heard about the broad Juniper strategy. We've heard about the details of Junos Pulse. We've heard from a real life enterprise customer. What we'd like to do now is dive into the next level of detail. We're gonna bring the end users into the equation. We're gonna do that via three personas, personas that you probably relate to, three people who will voice the great things that smartphones and tablets have enabled them to do in the enterprise and the consumer, but also the threats and the security problems that lurk beneath that they've realized. So the first persona that we're gonna show you via video is an employee, all of us, for example, using our corporate computing devices, accessing our network, sensitive data, and also using it for personal use. Doing that without perhaps realizing the threats that are underneath that. The first video will show you someone who realized that and what happened. The second video is gonna walk you through really a consumer's view, a family's view, a parent's view of mobile devices that they've given to their children that enable a whole plethora of things, right? Social connectivity, contacting their friends, the ability for the parent to contact their kid. Yet also the notion that, wait a minute, the parent also wants to protect and defend those children in case malicious things do happen, and how do they do that? The third video is really a video of all of us perhaps driving in here today, talking on our smartphones while in our taxi cab, perhaps forgetting our smartphone, shuffling through an airport and losing your phone, and see what happens when that happens and how does a person deal with that. So three videos. After that, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how Juno's Pulse solves every one of those problems. So let's roll the videos. Yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, love you too. Bye, I'm busy with work a lot. So I'm always on my phone. Someone's emailing me about this event. Someone needs to check availability for this thing. A couple of months ago, I went on a site and clicked on some file. And just like that, everyone on my contact list was hit with a virus. Everyone at work, 150 channel partners, my boss, her boss, it was a disaster. I didn't realize we didn't have security on the phone. I thought the business info and contacts would be locked, but it wasn't. Anything could have happened. Viruses, hackers, it only took a second for that virus to get in there, but it's taken us months to undo the damage. I remember her asking and asking for a phone a year ago. Her girlfriends Shaylin and Kate had them. So I thought, okay, it can't be that bad. We can keep tabs on her. She can use the phone to call me if she needs to. So we made the rules. She doesn't like the rules, but that's the deal. It was one thing when phones were just phones, but now you've got the web out there, you've got texting, the camera. It just all makes me think she's just out there. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know who's calling her, who's texting her, who's sending pics. I don't even know who has access to her. I got her the phone to help keep her safe, and I don't know if she's safe on it. To me, it's not a phone. It's my computer, it's my email, it's my contacts, my calendar, my company intranet. It's my mobile office. It's how I do my work. Without it, I'm lost. Worst day of my career, January 23rd, 2010. I'm in Tulsa, snowstorm, jet lag, delays. I go to make a call and my phone is gone. I had everything on there. I had spreadsheets, I had sales projections, my entire sales Rolodex. I had 
marketing information. I had new products on there, everything. So we go into a three month panic, sweating that that information is not lifted from that phone. I almost lost my job. That information is out there somewhere. Someone's got it, just not me. Well, this is my new phone. I still use it for everything. I'm not gonna stop using it. The question is, how am I gonna protect it? So three videos, three end users, three problems. What I said is we're going to show you how Junos Pulse can address each one of those. Remember back to the first one, an employee accessing corporate data, also using it as a personal device. All of a sudden, her contacts had been emailed, had been infiltrated. How do you solve that problem? Junos Pulse. We're going to show you a quick demo of how it solves that problem. So let's roll the demo. Let's say a user's phone has a virus. A notification pops up on their screen. The user can then access the virus report, telling them what's been found. One press of a button deletes the viruses. It's that simple. Juno's Pulse continually runs its virus detection in the background, helping to protect the user even when the phone is not being operated. The Juno's Pulse home screen also allows users to control a variety of features. They can update virus definitions, manually scan the device, files or folders for viruses, and look at scan history. An administrator can also access antivirus information via the mobile security console, a window into the mobile devices in their enterprise. Virus discovery alerts allow the administrator to access files that have previously been identified as viruses and removed from users' devices. It's an instant, easy way to protect the enterprise's entire mobile workforce and help ensure secure connectivity on each user's device. quick sample on Android of how you could solve that problem. A couple of key points that I want to make. One, think about how threats come into your phone, Wi-Fi, SMS, MMS, email, whatever it is. An antivirus malware engine built from the ground up for mobile devices to protect no matter how communication happens on your device, built to take into consideration battery life, memory usage, processing that is unique to a mobile device, very different from a laptop or desktop, built from the ground up for these devices. That's what Junos Pulse is. We also showed you the enterprise console, looking across all your devices, no matter what they are, Android, Symbian, Windows Mobile, Blackberry, having a common view of the malware in your environment and being able to remediate it with one solution versus four or five different ones. Two big differentiators of Junos Pulse. So we're gonna move on to now the next demo. You remember the second video, the parent, the family, the person who is very happy They'd enable their kid with a great communication mechanisms, yet also in the background wondering, wait, how do I protect and defend? In case, for example, you saw some of the statistics around sexting and so on. What we're going to show you is a offering a service provider could build to a consumer, to a family member, to a parent that could solve this problem. Everything you see here could be turned on, could be turned off. It's really up to the service provider to configure the offering. But why don't we roll the demo to see the power of how we protect against this with Junos Pulse. The Junos Pulse Parental Control Dashboard lets parents have an insider's view on how their children are using mobile devices on the family account. By logging in, a parent will access a multitude of features that they can control remotely on their child's device, including locking, unlocking, locating, backing up and restoring, wiping content, and the ability to sound a deterrent alarm on a lost or stolen phone. Other features parents can use include alerts that can be set up to monitor certain words their child is using in their texts. These alerts can be sent directly to a parent's mobile device. A call log which shows activity and gives parents the ability to blacklist numbers and block incoming calls to their child's phone. Antivirus reports that display corrupt files that have been detected. The ability to install and uninstall applications on their child's phone. A photo log, which allows parents to see photos that have been looked at on the browser or taken with the camera on their child's mobile device. And finally, Pulse allows parents to track location via GPS to see where their child's mobile device is instantly. So a couple key things I do want to point out. That offering is an offering a service provider can use and build into their offering to offer to families. 
how do they want to package it? Do they want to offer, for example, backup restore, virus protection services? Do they want to offer inbound SMS protection against text sexting? All capabilities that they can manage and package such that they can best address their consumer customer. That's the extensibility of Junos Pulse and enabling carriers to deliver value-added offerings to their customers in their specific geographic region. So the third video and the third demo uh, that I'm going to show is that man in the taxi cab. Remember, lost their phone, all of their sensitive data on the phone, all of their data lurking out there, someone else perhaps using it, pouring through financial records, even their personal data. How do you solve that problem? How do you enable that person to attempt to retrieve their phone, and if they can't, forever wipe the phone? That's what we're going to show you through this demo of Juno's Pulse. So let's roll the demo. It's an unfortunate but common scenario. A user has lost their mobile phone. The mobile security console from Junos Pulse allows a user or administrator to take the first step quickly. They can send an instant command to lock the phone so it can't be used. Then they can view the backup history on the mobile device. If it's been a while, they can instantly back it up right then and there so the information is saved before the device is wiped. Commands can be sent to the device to track where the phone is via GPS and a deterrent alarm can be activated on the lost phone itself. Once those commands have been sent, a user can view the location of the device. If the phone cannot be located by GPS tracking, let's say it was left on a subway, it can be wiped immediately, preserving the security of the device as well as any sensitive business information stored there. So a couple key things on that last demo. What happens when you lose your phone or any device? The first thing you want to make sure is you have a backup. Juno's Pulse enabling a backup regardless of smartphone. The second thing you want to do is let me go find that device. Where is it in the world? Let me go try to retrieve it. Juno's Pulse enables that. Find it on a GPS map. Set off an alarm so once you get close, you can hear it. Well, wait, I can't find it. Now what do I do? Well, then you wipe it. Remove it so nobody else can do what you don't want them to do with your data. After that, you get a new phone and you restore your data from Juno's Pulse. Full life cycle management of handling that use case. That's Juno's Pulse. So three personas, three real life end user problems, three demos of how Juno's Pulse addresses them. Obviously, there's many more that we could have given, but hopefully you got a flavor with those three. So with that, I'm actually going to introduce Mark Patterson from BT. Come on up, Mark. Welcome. Great. Mark is the general manager of the Mobile Data Services Group, and he's been kind enough also to share his time and walk us through how BT is leveraging Junos Pulse. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. And thank you, Juniper, for giving us the opportunity to talk about mobile security and what it means from a service provider perspective. I think you know, the role of a service provider within mobile security can be best summed up by the simple adage that enterprise security is a journey, not a destination. So David, you have some job security ahead of you. The, um, I think that the, the main thing that we've gained you know, in terms of our perspective, both as a consumer brand as well as providing an enterprise service to multinational corporations, is that device security and mobile devices in general is a multifaceted in industry. And much like our relationship with Juniper, we found that the um, ability to be able to bring into the enterprise smartphone technology is often a big balancing act between what is simple and sexy in the consumer space with the smartphones that are coming out today, and the natural inclination for enterprises to look towards security and stability to be able to provide solutions. Now, you know, from a BT perspective, there are two major services that we have out there. In the consumer space, we have the BT Total Broadband Anywhere solution, which is really where our journey with Juno's Pulse started back in 2007. On the enterprise side, Mobile Express provides for organizations the true managed service that takes these capabilities, these security capabilities, and provides a single solution to customers. So back in 2007, we brought in the antivirus and the firewall capabilities into our consumer platform within the, the, the handsets that we were releasing to our customers. And at the time, we decided to offer it for free. Value-added service provider offering service for free. Why? Well, one thing we recognized in 2007 is that the smartphone proliferation and the applications that were getting driven had longevity, longevity beyond the consumer. 
and really provided the foundation for what has become the prosumer space today. You look at the applications now that are driving this, this fanatic approach towards smartphones into the enterprise. The applications being used are common. And really, what is driving this prosumer th threat in some cases? It's really the end users. The end users are providing really the impetus for the consumerization of the enterprise. So from a BT perspective, that creates a huge market opportunity. Millions of end users on the BT total broadband anywhere solution, over 1,900 customers in the enterprise space on Mobile Express. The stronger that we can build the relationship with that end user, the stronger we can drive services and value into the prosumer space. So the market opportunity is huge. Like I said, in the UK alone, BT is servicing millions of end users with their, these kinds of solutions. In the enterprise space, equally looking at the multinational corporations that today you know, range from having half a million end users that are out there to even the very small, small businesses that are out there that are right now trying to see how they can bring these kinds of handsets, how they can bring this kind of technology into, the, into their enterprises today. You know, this creates a huge opportunity for us. Why Juniper? Well, like I said, the Juniper relationship with BT is multifaceted. It ranges from network security to providing device security. And today, for us, you know, what was most important? In the smartphone space, in the smart device space, cross-platform capability was critical. The ability for us to be able to deploy this not only within our network environment and offer it as a service, mobile security as a service, but the ability for our customers to be able to integrate it into their own security environment. Because in the enterprise space, enterprises don't outsource security. Enterprises integrate security capabilities, security policies that they define into a broader spectrum of devices. That is a service provider market opportunity. Technology performance was important. And I'll tell you that you know, dating back to 2007, at a time when a lot of organizations were struggling with point solutions and coming up with point capabilities that at times weren't very stable, the ability for us to be able to integrate this quickly, have it be stable, and reduce the amount of support calls that customers and end users who are just getting into this whole smartphone space, you know, reducing that, for us, lower to total cost of ownership for a service provider which we can translate into value that we're providing organizations. Now, the technology was very strong in terms of its performance, but I think the most important thing of all has been our relationship. Today, we are offering a very comprehensive set of, of solutions to the enterprise that range beyond the device and really look at the, the continuum that today is, is really going to define where mobile security is going. It used to be that mobile security was very protocol driven. We used to think in terms of you know, what is going to be the, uh, the access technology that's out there. What's going to be you know, the IP standard that we're going to adopt? We're now in that next stage where we've gone beyond the, the, the protocol to now talking about the device and the individual. But we all know that the number of devices that that individual is using is going up. And as that happens, we see a continuum that takes us to where the applications become the center of everything. It's why enterprises today are talking in terms of you know, app stores. They're talking about why the applications are important. They're talking in terms of consumerized technology that's adapted to the enterprise. And being able to provide a service that rides that continuum, well, that's the journey we're on. It's the journey our customers are on. And it's the reason why our customers see value in what BT is doing. So to sum up, we started in the consumer space. We recognize that smart devices were going to provide a very strong foundation for what mobile devices were going to be tomorrow. And we use that as a mechanism for us to be able to drive our enterprise offering, incorporating the lessons learned in the consumer space to build better mobile security solutions within Mobile Express. So with that, I'll hand it back over to the nice folks over at Juniper, and I thank you for your time. Well, okay, I just want to um, recap a couple of quick things. I, I think we heard some really interesting messages, uh, particularly from our partners. 
You know, John Donovan, CTO of AT&T, talked about the fact that this is strategic to the overall business strategy and priorities of AT&T. You know, David Merrill talked about the fact that the opportunity was huge, and I love this notion of the consumerization of the enterprise. It shows this intersection between what business professionals and consumers want, and Mark Patterson, I think, did a really nice job of reinforcing what I hope you took away, which is what sets us apart is a combination of performance and a combination of the broadest set of capabilities, both in terms of features as well as in terms of OSs. So with that, I would just like to thank you all very much for coming today. Um, we're really excited about the Juno's Post Mobile Security Suite. Um, you know we're a technology company, and sometimes it's really hard to show you how exciting a router can be. But hey, um, this is a really exciting offering from us. It makes much of what we do as a company uh, come alive, and so we're delighted to have the privilege to share it with you. I know many of you have one-on-ones meeting with members of the team who will be around for about another hour, so thanks very much for taking the time, and thank you for your interest in Juniper. Appreciate it.